What's up guys, GP Saint Fan Motorsports here and welcome back to Wheel Spin. Uh, today's car, the 1973 Lancia Stratus. Yeah, that's uh, that's the one. Absolutely incredible absolutely incredible looking car as you can tell. Uh, and it's quite a successful rally car too, which is part of the reason I wanted to showcase it today, because it won uh, rally championships, three consecutive rally championships, and 18 rallies from 1974 to 1976. So yeah, absolutely mean freaking retro rally car. Of course, this is the road version. Uh, but yeah, so mid-engined rear-wheel drive car with uh, freaking soft suspension. Yeah, uh, at, at first... I was uh, I was a little bit skeptical about this car because I'd driven it uh, prior to update uh, I think it was 1.09 when they fixed the handling of mid-engined rear-wheel drive cars and that the ha the handling on the on the car was absolutely stupid uh, I mean you could not you could not drive that car it was so loose and so much uh, oversteer. It was absolutely crazy. You had to be just exactly precise driving this car. Uh, drove it a couple of days ago, and, uh, and it was a lot better, but I, uh, you know, uh, it was still a little unpredictable. Yeah, you, you really have to be very careful with the weight on this car. Uh, so, yeah, it's just, uh, you just have to be so absolutely precise, uh, with, with this car, you know, even after the, even after the update. There is a little bit more leniency, uh, though, after 1.09, so, it's a, it's a very, very decent car to drive now, you just have to be a little bit careful, um... As you can see, I've got uh, I've got rally tires fitted, uh, but we're not going to be taking the car rallying just yet. Instead, we're going to be taking it to uh, Matterhorn, Matterhorn Rotenboden, which is a uh, well, it's almost a rally course. I'll be quite honest with you; it's very close to being a rally course. It's about two and a half miles long. It's a fictional track, and the drop is among the highest in the series, or the steepest in the series. Uh, I think it's 774 and a half feet from top to bottom. So, yeah, and, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's going to be a heck of an adventure. Here we go. This is my first try. Oh, this isn't actually my first try. But, uh, my first try, well, which I was going to include, which is why I said that, uh, I, I sort of had a very, very big off. I'll tell you where exactly I had that very big off. So, yeah, this first, uh, complex here, this first uphill complex, very difficult in any car. It's sort of, it drives sort of like a tighter reverse o rouge and... It's difficult indeed because that uh, at the bottom, if you turn even a little bit too much, if you let off the gas or brake a little bit too much, you're going to slide basically throughout the rest of the complex. And that problem is amplified by this car's sort of tendency to get a little bit, a little bit slidey, uh, if you will. But, uh, I mean... That's nothing compared to what happens next. This section. Oh my good lord. You're going downhill so freaking fast. And there's so many uh, fast corners. And that's what this car does not like. Fast corners. Here, it's a combination of that corner being a little bit too uh, fast. And me catching a little bit too much curb. I uh, uh, whack the tire barrier at the bottom of the corner and yeah that's one that's a strange corner because yeah at the bottom because 
if you, it sort of amplifies your car's actions. So if you were going to oversteer through that corner, uh, then you know it, it's because of the way the weight settles onto the car. Uh, if you if you were going to be oversteering through that corner, you're going to oversteer quite a a, a lot. It's a metric crap ton to be exact. If you're going to understeer, you're just going to whack the wall, period. Uh, through the rest of the uh, course after that, the car's a little bit more agreeable. Um, yeah, because, because you're not carrying as much speed, so... So you, uh, so you get to modulate the brake and throttle a little bit better and you don't have the weight sloshing around. Uh, because the suspension on this car is so soft that if you throw the weight around too much, it's just going to end up pinned on one side of the car. It's going to be very difficult to rest it back to the other side. So, uh, more than a little bit difficult to get this car around the track. Here we go on my second lap at the top of reverse erosion, as I like to call it. Uh, through this corner, and pretty much in every car, uh, it's easy to get wheel spin on the exit. Uh, because, first of all, it's a very tight corner, so you're going to be in a very low gear. And second of all, it does drop off a little bit, and some cars can be very sensitive to that drop. Uh, coming through the fast S's, I believe, right now, and I uh, catch a little bit less curb. Uh, get on the brakes a little bit uh, better. And uh, as a result, I'm able to stop the car a little bit quicker, although I do get some oversteer on exit because all the way to the front of the car. That is the serious downside to this soft suspension. It really likes to, it really likes to just pin the weight, like I said. It really, it really likes to make it so that it's hard to do exactly what you want with with the weight. So as a result, you have to be very, very careful. You have to modulate your gas and your braking, your throttle, and your steering to make sure that you uh, steer as little as possible in this car. So, yeah, that that's uh, that balance is absolutely critical getting a good lap into not stuffing it. Regardless, I think if you push the car uh, on, the, on the edge enough, you're still gonna, you know, you're still gonna end up oversteering and counter-steering at that through about half of the lap, maybe more. Uh, so it, it's a very, it's a strange, a strangely low limit that this car has for a mid-engine two-wheel drive car. Uh, and uh, through this corner, this is the third time around, uh, through this corner, uh, I actually get a little bit better exit there, I believe. And yeah, the whole, the car, I believe uh, by this time, the heat was in the tires, so I was a little bit I was able to be a little bit more confident in my lines and my driving overall uh, was better because then I sort of learned the car. And this is where I really nail this tight corner at the bottom of this hill. Yeah. And you see, I entered with the weight not, you know, all on the front like I did the last time. And, uh, you know, I entered with ideal weight distribution you saw the car was basically level as I entered and that's that's what you want you don't want the weight to the sides you don't want the weight to the front you don't want the weight to the back on approach you want the car to be dead level and then you want to apply maybe a half brake there and of course through these slow corners the car is exceptionally stable and uh, as a result, I'm just able to be a little bit more confident in my lines there. So, entering lap four now, and by the way, that is a pretty much flat out final corner. Uh, so, entering lap four now, 
And, well, it's pretty much more of the same, if you will. Uh, I just take a little bit more time to refine my lines a little bit, uh, a little bit more. I think in, in, uh, I think in this, on this lap, I actually back off my entry a little bit for most of the corners, which, again, you know, everything you do in this car, it needs to go back to keeping that weight exactly centered so that it doesn't become pinned and you don't have an extremely poor weight distribution going into corners. I can't mention the phrase weight distribution enough because no matter what track you drive this car on, it's going your lap time is going to come down to where your weight distribution is. The car is that finicky with weight distribution. It's crazy because in other advantage and rear wheel drive cars, yeah, it is about weight distribution because you're trying again to keep the weight in the middle of the car because that's where the car is, that's when the car is fastest is when the weight's in the middle. But here, because of the soft suspension, because of the uh, because of the road tires, it just becomes that much harder. So uh, I'd say the best, the absolute best line for this car, really any mid-engine rear-wheel drive car, is going to be slow in, fast out. You're going to have to back off your entry quite a lot in order to be able to keep the weight distribution where you want it, where you want it to be. Now you can have it all center a little bit in this car, but uh, you, you just have to be careful how far off center the weight is. And coming into the final lap here, and really, again, it's more the same. You know, this is basically building off of the, uh, the line, the sort of framework I laid out for myself on lap three. Uh, uh, I, I just, uh, I just refined my lines just a little bit more because I'm always hunting for that, uh, for that ideal lap. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, to be able to get the, uh, to be, to be able to, you know, get the best performance out of the car, you know, that, that I can. And that's a, that's a really nice shot there. Uh, here, yeah, again, just a uh, very graceful line. Uh, and through here, in fact, I think I could have shot that a bit straighter, but I'm not sure where the weight would have ended up. Uh, so, uh, there's really not much else to say about this lap, because it is literally just about more, more of the same, although for some reason I did somehow gain nine-tenths of a second over on my previous lap on the uh, section after the top, uh, after the uh, tight right-hander at the top of the course. And bring it through that uh, corner. Nice and nice and smoothly. Rolling into the throttle really is key with this car. Rolling into the throttle, night, you know, very smooth because of the tires. I'm not going to say it's because of the car. Uh, because I have a hunch that if, if this car was on better tires, you'd just be able to nail it on exit. Uh, comfort soft tires don't really offer a huge amount of grip. And in fact, I'm so satisfied with that lap. Then I decide to stop and do a little bit of a donut and whack the whack the rear end slightly. Yeah, we're gonna ignore that. I don't make mistakes in that in this game. What what are you freaking talking about? Uh, so lap time, uh, two oh one one eight four for that uh, lap, and it is on to some native turf for uh, Valencia Stratus, the uh, the Iger Nord one. Hay Trail. Yeah, this is basically the Nürburgring of off-road courses. So, uh, I I will not lie, this car actually felt a little bit better to drive on dirt somehow. I don't know how that works. Uh, maybe 
dirt tires have better grip on the surface they're supposed to be on uh, than comfort soft tires do. I have absolutely no clue how it works, but uh, I just felt a, a I just felt a little bit more sure of myself, a little bit more confident with these tires because they seemed to offer a little bit more grip on dirt than the comfort sauce did on uh, you know pavement. So yeah, you can see the uh, the insane rise, the, the insane elevation difference this track has as I drifted through that corner there. Now, now I want I want you to watch this. I want you to watch this S bend. Watch this. This is nearly full. That that's nearly flat out. I don't think I was under. Uh, I don't think I was under maybe three quarters throttle for the entirety of that S bend. Really, all you do is just throw it in there, scrub some speed, and then uh, and then Scandinavian flick it the other direction and scrub more speed. Just keep the throttle absolutely nailed. Uh, <laughs> it's insane. It's crazy how much grip this car has on dirt, especially considering that this is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive car. It's not four-wheel drive. So, rear-wheel drive cars on dirt, you know, that, that's usually an equation that doesn't add up. But here, it, it does. I don't know, maybe it's because the car has a little bit less power to send to the rear wheels than uh, a lot of other mid-engine rear-wheel drive cars. Uh, unfortunately, I do get a bit carried away and whack into the wall there, uh, but I carry on regardless. But yeah, it, it, it's I I don't know why this car has seems to have the amount of grip that it does on dirt. It's it's mystifying to me. Like it, uh, like I said, could be the tires, could be the car. Uh, because on dirt, sometimes pinning the weight is actually a good idea, because you know that helps uh, that helps scrub speed at some points. Uh, but just a lot, a lot of uh, of grip on offer for a, a rear wheel drive car on the on this on this course. Coming up to some hairpins which I absolutely suck at it's one of my uh, they're one of my uh, one of my few one of my many weaknesses on dirt it's strange that I should say that because I actually used to race go-karts on dirt well, I'll say dirt is actually clay that became very uh, finely packed over the race so it did end up being a little bit like asphalt and just yeah <laughs> Uh, and uh, uh, I, I don't know how. If somebody could give me some hints on how to take hairpins, then they would be much appreciated because no lie, I'm terrible, terrible at hairpins as you just saw. I can't, I guess it goes back to my drifting skills because I'm terrible at drifting. And the secret to um, getting around a hairpin on dirt to go over a jump there at about 75 miles an hour. But the secret to a dirt hairpin, I know, is to get the rear end out. I suck at getting the rear end out. Uh, so uh, if you if you really if you have some hints for some, for uh, taking uh, taking hairpins, then please give them to me. Give them all. Give me all your hints. So back on the pavement and about to start our second lap here. Uh, just got uh, to tuck it through that corner and tuck it through this corner. And we are on the second lap. And by the way, watch how I attack this corner. It's crazy how well the car gets stopped for the first corner. And dang, my preview is lagging quite badly in Vegas. So, <laughs> that sort of sucks, but yet, uh, yeah, it's just a huge amount of grip for this car on this surface. Same story goes for ice as well. And we go over the train tracks. I cut the corner a little bit better than we did last time. 
Uh, yeah, and uh, I just had to do something there, but, uh, but yeah, and we stopped a little bit better through that corner as well, and again, watch the S-Bend. It's absolutely miraculous to see this car in action around that S-Bend, and that was actually more throttle. That couldn't have, I, I don't know, that, that couldn't have been maybe under, uh, maybe under, I don't know. That was more throttle that time than it was last time. And last time I was probably at three quarters throttle through the entire corner. And we get to see gravity take a little bit of an effect on the stratus there. And back down this freaking frightful, frightful section of track. Uh, over 100 miles an hour. That was an awesome camera shot, by the way. Over 100 miles an hour. Absolutely scared every time I take that corner because it's just... It's just... I, you know, I'm like... Every time I take it, I'm like, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna stop. I'm never gonna make it through that corner, and yet I do. Now down to the section where we screwed up last time and ended up, ended up banging our fender. And, yeah, make it through. Pretty alright-ish. And, again, nipping and tucking through here. And straight through this next corner. This, uh, this section is actually pretty easy because you're not carrying a whole lot of speed. It's basically just, you know, modulating your throttle and make sure, making sure you've swung out enough to attack each corner at you know, at the optimal angle. And hard brakes uh, down uh, down uh, through that section. And back onto the freaking Aspins again. Ah, uh, I hate these. Well, I mean, they're, they're pretty cool because they get, you know, because they're sort of, uh, they're sort of a fun little drifting section, but I'm terrible at them. I, I'm absolutely, like, watch this. I just can't, I don't know how to put the rear end free. I know e-brake uh, is helpful when you're trying to do that, but uh, I, I don't, you know, I've got, uh, for my e-brake button, I've got literally a, a button, I think it's mapped to circle or something on my steering wheel. So it's either on or off. I can't like pull it up certain amounts or anything. I do take this one a little bit. Well, at the time, I thought it was a little bit better, but it actually cost me about seven one-hundredths of a second. And back through this very fast part of the course. It's actually really, really fun here. Because you have to, you have to slide just a little bit before you hit that jump in order to make sure you, have, you uh, retain, you keep the optimal drift angle throughout that throughout that corner so it's a little bit technical it's not too much and uh we slide it back onto the pavement and go through the fourth to last corner depending on you know if you count the last two sort of uphill s's and then and then a Cross the line. Yeah. Well, that was certainly an interesting adventure with the Lancia Stratus. Again, I do think we have a little bit of a case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, uh, just like we had with the Mazda 787B. Though not as much by a mile. Because the Mazda 787B was two completely different cars. Uh, on two completely different tracks. Here, with the Lancia Stratus, you know, it, it's still identifiably the same car on both uh, both tracks that we used here today, although, you know, it does seem to feel a little bit better on dirt. Uh, why that is, I don't know, because dirt is supposedly a less grippy surface. So, it's, it's, a, it's a strange case uh, there, but not as strange as the 787B, like I said, by a long shot. 
so basically the trick with this car on whatever surface uh, that you're that you're driving on is watch the weight be a weight watcher subscribe to the weight watchers diet <laughs> but yeah that's the trick is watch the weight make sure it doesn't go uh, too far to either side at least on uh, faster corners especially so on pavement uh, if you're using comfort soft tires at least on other on other tires go crazy but yeah uh, just watch the weight make sure it doesn't get pinned to either side you know and be very very mild with your throttle your brake and your steering inputs and you know that's that that's a fast lap basically as long as you don't do anything stupid uh, on but on dirt you can actually afford to pin the weight you know a, lo a little bit more you've got a little bit more freedom on dirt for whatever reason because of the higher level of grip I never thought I'd be able to say that about dirt versus pavement but you can afford in many circumstances to go you know to uh, force the weight all to one side or, or the other depending on the corner and your driving style uh, but really you just don't keep it there for too long because you know, because there will come a point inevitably because it's a race we're going to need to uh we're going to need to switch that weight over to the other side so yeah lentia stratus 1973 awesome car uh highly recommend you give it a go hey if you like this video then go ahead and pitch like that like button if you really 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 liked it and you want to see more go ahead and hit that subscribe button hey i've been cheapy you've been awesome and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheapy 75 out.